Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss C two actual paper chemistry. So let's see the question. Question number one. Although chlorine is an electron withdrawing group, it is ortho and para directing an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction because. Let's see the first one. Saying chlorine electron chlorine withdraws electron through inductive effect. That is the correct one because chlorine is a minus i group. So it withdraws electrons. So A is the correct option. Next one, chlorine destabilizes the intermediate carbocation formed during electrophilic substitution. That is also correct since it is electron withdrawing group. It destabilizes the carbocation. And chlorine accepts electron through resonance. That is the wrong answer because chlorine is a plus R group, right? So it uh, releases electron through resonance. So A, B, D are correct answer. So he is saying choose the correct answer from the above. So answer is one here. So answer is one. So I'll say this is a moderate question from Halo Alkins, right? Because why this is moderate question? Because if you don't know the proper concept, you can't answer this well. Okay, so that's why it's a moderate question. Okay, so let's see the next one. Question number two. In etard reaction, the final product is. So, what is etard reaction? When toluene reacts with bromyl chloride, followed by hydrolysis, you are going to get. Benzaldehyde, which is an aromatic aldehyde. So answer is one. This is an easy question from Maldehyde Ketones chapter. It's a memory-based question. If you memorize the reaction, you can easily answer this one. Okay, and you have to memorize named reaction. So I'll say that is why this is an easy question. Let's move to the next one. Question number three. Aniline does aniline does not undergo Friedel-Crafts reaction because see aniline means this one NH two group on the benzene ring. So it has basically lone pair. So Friedel-Crafts re reaction happen in presence of AlCl three, which is a Lewis acid. So this aniline donates this electrons to AlCl three. So aniline does not undergo Friedel reaction because first reason is given. It forms salt with Lewis acid catalyst ClCl3. That is a correct one. Next, nitrogen of aniline requires negative charge. Acquires negative charge. No, it doesn't acquire negative charge because after donating, it should get a positive charge. So A is a correct option. Uh, C is a correct option. And nitrogen acts as strong deactivating group in further reaction. Once it is Reacted with AlCl3, so you're now you are going to get the positive charge, right? So you will get a positive charge like this, NH2 and AlCl3 like this. So that will act as a deactivating group. Okay, so the answer is D is also correct. So A, C, D only. So answer is three. So this is a moderate question. From amines, and it's a concept-based question. If you know the concept well, then only you can answer such type of questions. Okay, so that is about question number three. Okay, so let's see next one, question number four. <coughs> Excuse me. So question number four, given that match list one with list two. So in list one, it says that amino acids linked in a specific sequence. So that is basically nothing but primary structure of proteins. And regular folding of a specific sequence of amino acids due to hydrogen bonding that is secondary structure of proteins. And fibrous proteins are nothing but quaternary, uh, sorry, tertiary structure of proteins. 
and special arrangement of the correct uh, special arrangement of the protein will be quaternary structure so a is 1 b is 2 and c is 4 and d is 3 so answer should be 3 here it's a pretty straight forward questions from biomolecules right so the, that's a easy question okay so easy question that's a, from biomolecules and it's memory based question right if you know what are those yeah, you can answer this very easily okay so let's move to the next question question number 5 match list 1 with list 2 So what is Tollens reagent? Tollens reagent is ammonical silver nitrate, right? So A is three, which is AG NH three twice plus basically. So it's a ammonical silver nitrate solution. Okay, Jones reagent is basically chromium trioxide and sulfuric acid. So B is four. B is four. A was three. And Lucas reagent is concentrated HCl and zinc chloride, right? So C is two. And failing solution is mixture of Rochel salt and copper sulfate. So D is one. So this is a memory based question from the entire organic, right? Or you can say this is from aldehydes, ketones. Also, you can say, right? So this is a memory based question, and I would say this is an easy question because you have to answer, you have to remember all these reagents, otherwise. You can't do many reactions, so this is a pretty basic question, right? So A is three, B is four, C is two, and D is one. So answer should be one here. Okay. So I hope it is clear. Let's move to the next one. Question number six. Swartz reaction. Is basically nothing but production of alkyl chloride from the alkyl halide. So A is three here. And Finkelstein reaction is production of alkyl iodide from the alkyl halides. I think the last reaction is that one only. I think they are mixed basically. So B is four. And next one is Sandmeier's reaction is basically from the aniline synthesis of alkyl halide. So C is one. And Wood's reaction is basically two. Okay, last one is Wood's reaction, so D is two. So A is three, B is four, C is one, and D is two. So answer is four. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number seven. Match list one with list two. And list one, some biomolecules are given, and list two, some their functions and diseases are given. So this is basically from biomolecules and a memory-based question, and I'll say this is moderate question because not all of, all the students can memorize these things. First one is vitamin A is responsible for xerothalmia, which is night blindness. So A is two basically, and thiamine is basically vitamin B complex. Which uh, deficiency causes very very so B is three and uh, estradiol is responsible for menstrual cycle so D is one which is a female hormone right so D is one so only thing that is less, uh, left is uh, glucocorticoid which is responsible for Edison disease so C is four. So A is two, B is three, C is four, D is one. So if you don't know the third one, also you can answer from the remaining. So answer is four here. Okay, this is a moderate question from the biomolecules chapter. You have to memorize this. Okay, this is a memory based question. Next one is question number eight. Okay, let's see the question. In the following table. Match the reactants given in list one with the correct product in the list two, as per the hydration of the alkene under acidic conditions. So this is from the alcohols, phenols chapters, alcohols, phenols, ethers chapter. So acidic condition hydration, it proceeds through carbocation, so it will give more stable carbocation only. 
so when oh is added to this h3o plus is added to this oh should be attached to this carbon where you have uh, less number of hydrogens or more stable carbocation will be formed so a will give you two definitely so a is two right and next one is when uh, b is reacted with h3o plus the oh will be formed here so uh, b should be one okay b should be one next when h3o plus is added to this definitely oh we can add any of the uh, alkene here so that is a, a, a symmet uh, i mean symmetrical alkene so c is 4 basically c is 4 and d will be left with 3 because when this is added oh so uh, oh will be added to here because this is the most stable carbocation it's going to give Right, so C uh, D is basically three. Right, so D is three. So answer should be three here. Should be three here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number nine. Which of which among the following is not analgesic? So this is a question from chemistry in everyday life. So this is a memory based question. Okay, so question is which among the following is not analgesic? Morphine, heroin, codeine, and ranitidine. So answer for this is ranitidine. All the remaining are basically act on the nerves. <coughs> so answer is four here. So this is a memory based question from the chemistry in everyday life chapter. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 10. The increasing order of acidity among the following compounds based on pKa value is, remember, <coughs> as the acidic character moves, acidic character more, pKa will be less. The acidic character is more, pKa will be less. And as the electron withdrawing groups are there, Electron withdrawing group increases, acidic character increases. So out of all this, fluorine is more acidic. <coughs> so it will have the less pKa. So C, then comes B, because fluorine is next electron withdrawing group. So C, B, A, D is having no electron withdrawing group. So that will have the least acidic nature and highest pKa value. So C, B, A and D should be the answer. But he's saying that is uh, increasing order of pKa values. Okay. So increasing order should be more for in pKa value should be more for D but uh, the option is not given like this. I think the options are given wrong here. Given options are wrong here. Right? Given options are wrong here. Because it should be increasing order means it should be C, B, A, D. Right? Because D will have the highest PK value because of the lowest acidic nature. Right? So yeah, so given options are wrong here. So the correct option is C, B, A, D. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 11. For SN2 reaction, the decreasing order of reactivity of the following alkyl halides is. So what is the uh, SN2 reactivity we have to consider for SN2 reaction? This is a haloalkane question. And I think I will, I'll consider this as an easy question because SN2 reaction most of us will study, right? Steric hindrance is basically, steric hindrance is inversely proportional to SN2 reactivity. That means more the steric hindrance, less is the SN2 reactivity. And less the steric hindrance, more is the SN2 reactivity. So that's why primary alkyl halides will have more reactivity than secondary than tertiary. 
so here this is primary this is secondary this is tertiary this is also primary but out of all this a having less steric interest so a will have more reactivity then comes b then comes b then comes c c will be having least reactivity so c b d a should be the answer so answer is 4 here right so i'll say this is a easy question but it can be difficult for some people because if you don't identify properly primary between e and d that will be difficult right so i hope it is clear for everyone so let's go to the next question question number 12 so this is a passage based question read the following passage and answer the next five questions based on it battery or cell converts a chemical energy on of the redox reaction to electrical energy in fuel cell the chemical energy of combustion of fuels like hydrogen ethanol etc are directly converted to electrical energy in a fuel cell hydrogen and oxygen reacts to produce electricity where hydrogen gas is oxidized at anode and oxygen is reduced at cathode and the reactions involved are given here h2 plus 2h minus gives 2h2 plus 2 electrons cathode reactions o2 plus 2h2 plus 4 electrons gives 4h minus 67 point liters of h2 at stp reaction 15 minutes The number of moles of hydrogen oxidized is. I think that's the first question. So 67.2 liters of hydrogen at STP reaction, 15 minutes. The number of moles of hydrogen oxidized is. So if you see the reaction, basically, what is the reaction? H2 uh, gives 2H plus plus two electrons. That's the reaction. So two moles. Or two Faraday required for production of one mole of H two or one mole of H two to oxidize, right? Two Faradays are responsible for one mole oxidize. Now he said that sixty-seven point two liters of hydrogen at STP reaction fifteen to fifteen minutes. So sixteen seven sixty-seven point two liters means how many number of moles is there basically? Number of moles is sixty-seven point two by. Twenty-two point four, which is three moles, right? So the question is sixty-seven point two liters of hydrogen at STP reaction, fifteen minutes. The number of moles of hydrogen oxidized will be. So answer is three, three moles. So answer is three here. Okay, so it's a very easy question directly from the formula. Next one, question number thirteen. So same uh, paragraph. Let's see. Next one is. The number of moles of electrons produced in the oxidation of sixty-seven point two liters of H two at STP. So, number of moles, how much we got? Number of moles we got sixty-seven point two by twenty-two point four. That means three moles. And we know one mole of H two is giving two H plus plus two electrons. That means two electrons it's giving. So, three moles means how many? It will give six moles. So, answer is four here. Go to the next question. The quantity of electricity produced in the oxidation of 67.2 liters of H2O at STP. So we said that six moles of electrons are produced. So that means six Faradays are there, right? So six into 96.5 hundred. 96.5 into six. So 965 into six basically how much? Six five three zero. Six thirty-six plus three thirty-nine, six nine fifty-four plus three fifty-seven. So the answer should be five seven nine triple zero coulomb. So answer is two here. All these are memory uh, uh, formula-based question, very easy question. Okay. So question number fifteen. The entire current produced is used for the electro deposition of silver of atomic weight one hundred eight grams per mole from silver solution. The amount of silver produced will be. See basically. We got six Faraday of current, right? So the entire current produced, whatever is used for the electro deposition of silver. So if you see silver, Ag plus plus electron gives Ag. That's the reaction. So one Faraday required for one mole of Ag. So six Faraday if you use, so you'll get six moles of Ag. So six into one zero eight. That should be six forty eight grams. So answer should be two here. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Question number sixteen: The source of electrical energy on the Apollo moon 
applied first. Obviously, it should be hydrogen, oxygen, fuel cell. Answer is four. So fuel cells are used for the uh, uh, spaceships and all. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 17. So this is another uh, paragraph based question. Read the following passage and answer the next five questions based on it. So it's given transition series and uh, inner transition series. So in any transition series, as we move from left to right, the d orbitals are progressively filled and the uh, and their properties vary accordingly. The above are the two series of uh, block elements in which the chemical properties won't change much. The five of series elements are radioactive in nature and mostly are artificially synthesized in laboratories, and thus is uh, and thus much is not known about their chemical properties. So this is about the passage d uh, d block elements f block elements are given here. So question first one is identify the incorrect statement. Second ionization enthalpy of Ag is greater than second ionization of enthalpy of palladium. See as you move here, basically here what happens? Uh, in the case of copper, the electronic configuration is it will be n minus one d one n minus one d ten and n s one. So one electron loss. So they will start get uh, stabilizing their uh, electronic configuration. So copper and Ag have the second highest electron gain enthalpy. So that is a correct statement. Second ionization of enthalpy of Ag is greater than second ionization of palladium. Next. The zirconium and hafnium shares almost identical nuclear properties. That is correct because of the lanthanide contraction. Next, melting point of manganese is lower than that of chromium. That's correct because manganese has the uh, five electrons in it, which is a half filled electron. So that that is a, that doesn't have a proper metallic bond. So melting point of manganese is lower than chromium. That is correct. Chromium has the highest melting point of all in the D, uh, in the three D block. Okay. Next, interstitial compounds are non stoichiometric and neither ionic or nor covalent nature that's wrong interstitial compounds are basically uh, covalent in nature so that is a incorrect statement so answer is four here let's move to the next question question number 18 which of the following is the correct order of second ionization enthalpy so vanadium chromium manganese are given so vanadium is basically atomic number 23. So that will be 3D3, 4S2. And chromium have atomic number 24. And it has 3D5, 4S1. And manganese is atomic number 25. So it has 3D5, 4S2. So it wants to lose its two electrons to get stabilized. So manganese will have least second ionization enthalpy. So manganese will have least second ionization enthalpy. Whereas if you see chromium, here both are unpaired electrons. So if you lose one electron, it will get 3D5 easily. So chromium can have plus one oxidation state easily, but the second ionization enthalpy will be very difficult there. So chromium has highest uh, second ionization enthalpy of all of them. So Vanadium is less than chromium and chromium is greater than manganese. That should be the answer. So answer is three here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 19. Which of the following pair of compounds exhibit same color in the aqua solution? So this is a memory based question only. Right, so. So FeCl2, CuCl2. CuCl2 is basically blue in color and FeCl2 is kind of Fe2 plus is kind of a green in color. So that's not our answer. VOCl2, CuCl2. That is our answer. Both are blue in color. So answer is two here. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Which number 20. Which metal has the highest oxygen state in the first row transition series? So answer will, answer will be manganese because manganese has plus seven oxygen state here. Because it has 3D5, 4S2 electrons in the outside. So they can easily donate it. So and manganese will have highest oxygen state there. Okay, answer is 3 there. Let's go to the next question. Question number 21. Why do the actinides exhibit higher number of oxygen state than lanthanides? So let's see the reasons what they are given. Uh, 4F orbitals are more diffused than 5F orbitals. That is correct statement. 
right? Four F orbitals are more diffuse, so it's difficult to give electrons. So that is a correct statement. Energy difference between five F and six D is less with respect to the energy difference between four um, F and five D. <coughs> energy difference between five F and six D is less with respect to energy difference between four F and five D. Uh, five F and that is a correct statement, but uh, is it responsible for our answer? Actinides exhibit higher number of oxygen states. Uh, that is also responsible for our answer, basically. So I think two is more appropriate than one. Let's see the others also. Energy difference between five F and six is more. So that is not correct. If the above one is correct, this is not correct. <coughs> Actinides are more reactive in nature than lanthanides. That is not our answer. So that can't explain. So between A and B, you have to select. 4F orbitals are more diffused than 5F orbitals, uh, but that doesn't explain the higher number of oxygen states. But the energy difference between 5F and 6D will give you higher number of oxygen states because of that div uh, small difference. Many oxygen states it can show, right? So, uh, answer should be 2 here. Let's move to the next one. <coughs> Camphor in nitrogen is a type of solution. Okay, so here again MCQ question was started. So this question is from solutions chapter. So camphor is solid and nitrogen gas is basically gas. So solid in gas, it should be. So answer should be two here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 23. Identify the correct order of organic compounds in the following chemical reaction. I think this reaction is not given properly right so i think some misprint happened so in this question okay so let's move to the next question question number 24 consider the following statements regarding osmotic pressure molar mass of a protein can be determined using osmotic pressure method so molar mass of a protein can be determined using osmotic pressure method. That's a correct statement. The osmotic pressure is proportional to molarity. That is correct because pi is equal to C into RT. So second is correct. Reverse osmosis occur when pressure larger than osmotic pressure is applied to the concentration solution. That is also correct, correct statement. Right. And edema occurs due to retention of water in tissue cells as a result of osmosis. So what is edema basically? Edema occurs due to result, resultant retention of water in tissue cells as a result of osmosis. Yeah, so that is also, I think, correct statement. So A, B, C, D all are correct. So answer is 3 here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 25. Vapor pressures of pure liquids A and D at 50 degrees Celsius are 500 mmH and 800 mmH respectively. The binary solution of A and D boils at 50 degrees Celsius and 700 mmHg pressure. The mole percentage of D in the solution is. So he's asking for the mole percentage of D in the solution. So what is the formula that we have to apply is this is solutions question from solutions and Raoult's law. Question is from Raoult's law. So, what is the formula we have to use? P is equal to P naught A X A plus P naught B X B. That's the equation we have. So, he's given vapor pressure of pure liquids are given. Like P naught A is given as 500 mm and P naught B is given as 800 mm. Right. Uh, the binary solution of A and D boils at 50 degrees Celsius and uh, 700 mm Hg pressure. So total pressure is 700 mm Hg. Right. The mole percentage of D in the solution is. So you can write this as P is equal to P naught A into 1 minus Xd. You can write like that plus P naught B into Xd. Right. You can write like that. So total pressure is 700 is equal to P naught A plus P naught B minus P naught A into XD. You can write like that. 
So 700 is equal to P naught A is 500. And this is P naught B minus P naught P naught D minus P naught A will be 300. 300 into X D. So 700 minus 500, 200. So 200 by 300 is equal to X D. So that will be X D is equal to 2 by 3. And percentage, if you want, 2 by 3 into 100, right? That will be 66.7%. So answer is 2 here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 26. So here the equation is given as 2A2 plus, I think, 2A2 plus 1 by 4 x4 okay that's the equation let's see what question is given volume is increased to double its value by decreasing the pressure on it volume is volume is increased to double by decreasing pressure on it if the reaction is first order with respect to x and second order with respect to a2 the rate of the reaction will volume is increased to double its value by increasing a pressure on it so volume is increased to double means concentration will be halved basically, right? Uh, the reaction is first order with respect to X. So if you write the rate of the reaction, so rate is equal to K into X and uh, X power 1 and uh, second order with respect to so A2 power 1. So here what is happening? Volume is increased to double. So concentration is decreased by half, right? Because concentration is equal to N by V. So volume increased to double means concentration is half, right? So what happens to rate of the reaction? So K is equal to X by 2 into A2 is second order with respect to. So 1 by 2 whole square into A2. So that will be 1 by 8 times. So, so it decreases by in 1 by 8 times of initial value. So answer is 1 here. Okay. So let's move to the next one. It's number 27. The total number of sigma bonds present in P4O2. So how to write the structure of P4O2? So you have to write down the structure of P4O2. You have to memorize this. So this is P. Okay, one minute. First of all, write down P four 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 phosphorus. Then I think easily you can give the oxygen one. Yeah, now you can give the oxygen. So this is P four O ten. You can see that is P four O ten, right? One two three four five six. 7, 8, 9, 10. So, what is the total number of sigma bonds present in before water? So, let's count this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Right? So, total 16 sigma bonds are there and 4 pi bonds are there. So, answer should be. Answer should be three here. Okay, I hope it is fine. So let's move to the next one. Question number twenty-eight. In the electrolysis of alumina to obtain aluminum metal, the cryolite is added mainly to lower the melting point of alumina. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's the correct answer. Let's see the others. The dissolved alumina in the molten cryolite not correct. Remove the impurities of alumina not correct. Increase the electric not correct. Okay, so answer is one here. So this is a memory based question from metallurgy. Okay, so metallurgy question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 29. Identify the order of the reaction if the rate constant is k is equal to 2 into 10 power minus 2, second inverse. So k is basically depend on the only time. So general units for rate constant basically general units of rate constant are basically mole power 1 minus n 
liter power n minus one and second inverse. So n value should be one here, so that it should be second inverse. So answer is first order. So answer is two here. So this is a question from chemical kinetics. Okay, I also is a easy question from the direct units unit. Okay. Let's move to the next question. Question number thirty. For a complex reaction, the order of reaction is equal to. Uh, for a complex reaction means complex reaction means having more number of steps. Okay, so the order of the reaction is equal to the order uh, the molecularity of the slowest step of the reaction. So answer is four here, right? So the slowest step will decide the order here. So answer is four. Next question number thirty one. The molecule associates. In a given solvent, as per the following equation, I think this is, uh, this is N X gives X N basically. For a given concentration of X, the hand of reactor was found to be 0.8. So I value is given as 0.8. So question this. Associated molecules was 0.3. So, what do you mean by fraction of associated molecules? Alpha is 0.3, right? The correct value of n is. So, he's asking what is n? So what is the formula? I is equal to 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 into alpha. So, I is 0.8. This is equal to 1 plus 1 by n minus 1 into 0.3. So, if 1 comes out here so this will be minus 0 0.2 which is equal to uh, 0.3 by n 0.3 by n minus 0 0.3 so if the 0 0.3 comes here that will be 0 0.1 which is equal to 0 0.3 by n so n should be 0 0.3 by 0 0.1 so n should be 3 so answer is 2 here okay so answer is 2 let's go to the so. Next, next question. Question number 32. Oxidation number of cobalt in complex CO, H2N, CH2, NH2, thrice, SO4, thrice is. So, this is a neutral compound, basically. So, neutral ligand. So, oxidation number here is CO3 plus and SO4 2 minus, right? So, this 3 should be on the coordination sphere and that should be the oxygen state for it. So answer is one. So this is a very easy question from coordination compounds. Let's move to the next question. Question number 33. The correct structure of dipeptide glycine alanine is. So glycine is H2N, CH2, COOH. So glycine is started here. So, so this should be H2N, CH2, COOH, this side. And alanine is... Uh, CH, NH2, CH, CH3, COOH, right? So here OH and here hydrogen will be gone. So H2N, CH2, CO, NH, CH, CH3, COH, answer should be one here. Okay, so this is a question from biomolecules. I will say this is moderate question because most of the students doesn't remember uh, <coughs> structures of amino acids. And also, if they remember, they don't know how to write the structures of this dipeptides and all. Okay, so let's move to the next one then. Question number 34. The total number of ions produced from the complex CrNH36Cl3 in aqua solution will be. <coughs> and this is a question from coordination. This is a very basic question, very, very easy question. Just you have to understand the, whatever the coordination, it's not going to split. Only Cl3 will be split. So, you are going to get Cr, NH3, 6, 3 plus, plus 3 Cl minus in the solution. So, that means, so total 4 ions are there in the solution. So, answer is 3 here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 35. Arrange the following in the decreasing order of number of molecules obtained, contained in. So, this is a very basic question from basic concepts of chemistry, based on basic concepts of chemistry. Number of moles, you can also say this is in solutions, kind of related to solutions chapter. So what is the 
question is uh, arrange the following in the decreasing order of number of molecules contained in 16 grams of oxygen means <coughs> number of moles you have if you find out you will answer so number of moles is 16 by 32 <coughs> so for the first one number of moles is 1 by 2 for the that's that is for a and for b number of moles will be 16 by 44 Next one will be number of moles will be sixteen by twenty-eight for the C, and for D it will be sixteen by two. So less the number of molecular weight, so more will be the number of molecules. So choose the correct order from the options given below. So decreasing order he is saying so D will be having highest, then comes, uh, then comes C, then comes A, then come B, right? C having only twenty eight and thirty two is for A and highest for C O two molecular weight. So answer should be two here. Let's move to the next one. Question number thirty six. The copper metal crystallizes in FCCl lattice with unit cell edge length of three sixty one picometers. The radius of copper atom is. So he is giving FCCl lattice, right? So basically, for FCCl lattice to have Copper metal crystallizes into FCCl lattice with unit cell of 361 picometers. So A is given as 361 picometers. The radius of copper atom is. So copper metal crystallizes in FCCl lattice. The radius of copper atom is. That's the question. So what is FCC basically? FCC is on the face center. All the corners are attached to the face. So from here we say this value is root two a is equal to four r. So he is given a value. So one point four one four into a is equal a is how much three sixty one is equal to four into r. We have to find out r. So four year ninety uh, times almost it, it will cancel out. So ninety into one point four one four. So almost fourteen point four one four into nine. I can say. So fourteen into nine. If you see how much approximately, we can know the answer. Nine four is thirty six. Nine one and twelve one twenty six. So answer should be one twenty seven picometers. So answer is one here. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Question number thirty seven. If seventy five percent first order reaction gets completed in thirty two minutes, time taken for fifty percent completion of this reaction is. So he is asking basically t half value. So how to do this? Uh, we have to, this is a chemical kinetics question and memory uh, formula based question basically if you know the formula you can answer easily so what is the formula k is equal to 2.303 by t into log of a not by a so you can apply this formula for anything and rate constant is same for uh, same for the reaction same for the uh, any of that At any of the times, so you can apply that formula. So two point, I can write like this: two point three zero three by t half into log a naught by a naught by two. That is a t half value. So a naught a naught will get cancelled. That is equal to two point three zero three by t value is given as thirty two minutes. So thirty two into log of. So he's saying that seventy five percent of reaction is completed. So that means, so if this is a uh, hundred. A and this will be uh, completed 20, uh, left with 25 A, so that means you are going to get log 4 there, right? So 2.303, 2.303 2 will get cancelled. So 1 by t half into log 2 is this one, and log 2 is equal to 1 by 32 into 2 log 2 this one. Log 4 will be written as 2 log 2. So log 2 log 2 will also be get cancelled. 2 years, 16 times cancel. So answer is 16 minutes here. So answer is 1 here. This is a formula-based question. If you know the formula, you can solve this like this. Okay. So let's move to the next one. Question number thirty-eight. Which of the following compounds will be repelled if placed in external magnetic field? So basically, what you have to uh, understand is, diamagnetic compounds will repel. Diamagnetic compounds repel in the external magnetic field. So this is a question from coordination compounds. So if you know the magnetic behavior. So you 
you can say you can say the answer so basically how to find out magnetic behavior so number of unpaired electrons should be zero there okay, if the number of unpaired electrons are zero then that should be diamagnetic so here if you see copper have plus two oxygen state so n value will be one there one unpaired electron is there next one is cadmium plus two so their number of unpaired electrons are zero because cadmium is in the zinc group so zinc cadmium mercury so i'll have nd uh, n minus 1 d 1 to 10 right n minus 1 d 1 to 10 and ns2 so this is one not 1 to 10 n minus 1 d 10 right so that is completely filled electrons so remaining are not diamagnetic so answer is 2 here let's move to the next one question number 39 the spin only magnetic moment of hexa cyano dimanganate uh, to ion is so hexa cyan cyanido manganate to ion so mn2 plus basically first of all here and hexa cyanido manganate means so you can write like this mn cn6 2 minus right so hexa cyanido manganate to so mn cn6 Two, uh, so four minus basically, yeah. So you you need to have manganese plus two, so that is four minus. So here, manganese basically have twenty five is the atomic number, so three D five four S two. So since two are gone, so M N two plus will be having D five. So D five means it has number of unpaired electrons like this. But since C N is a strong ligand. Strong ligand, it will pair up, and you are going to get number of unpaired electrons. You are going to get only one, n equal to one. So one is the number of unpaired electrons. So answer is one point seven three four mega. Answer is two. So this question is from coordination from uh, compounds, and it's based on the spin magnetic moment. Very easy question, right? So already two two questions are given from this concept. Okay. So Mewes is asking. So this is a very basic question. Okay, I hope it is clear. Let's go to the next one. Question number forty. The correct order of increasing boiling points of the following compounds is. Remember, alcohols always have the highest boiling points. Then comes carbonyl compounds. Right. Then comes ethers. Then at the last, obviously, we have alkenes. Why alcohols have highest boiling point due to hydrogen bonding? So this is a very basic question from alcohol phenol chapter. Very easy question. So here uh, is saying increasing order. So alcohol will have highest. Then comes pentanol. Then comes ethoxy. Then then comes n-butene. So answer is four here. Let's move to the next one. Question number forty-one. In the following reaction, identify the product T. I think reaction. I think not given properly. Okay. So basically, yeah. So we can skip this question basically. Yeah. So let's go to the question number forty-two. The gold number range of some liophilic colloids is given below. So which among these can be used as a better pro uh, protective colloid? Remember, lesser the gold number, lesser the gold number. More is protecting action. That's all the gold number. More is protecting action. So this is a question from surface chemistry. That's all the gold number. More is the protecting action. So as you can see, A is have point zero zero five, which is having the least of all of them. Point zero zero five to point zero zero one, the least value of gold number. So it can be better protective colloid. So answer is A. So answer is one. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number forty-three. Reaction of aniline with concentrated H and O three and concentrated H two O four at two ninety-eight Kelvin will produce forty-seven percent of. So basically, when aniline reacts with H and O three and H two O four, concentrated H and O three and concentrated H two O four, you will get para nitro aniline as fifty-one percent and meta nitro aniline as forty-seven percent. 
so it has 47% why this happens because of the formation of nilenium ion here so this is a very basic question we discussed in the class very n number of times so answer should, should be 3 here okay we have discussed this many times in the class let's go to the next one question number 44 what will be the increasing order of basic strength of the following compounds this also we have discussed many times in the class this is from amine chapter basic nature we know that remember first thing aliphatic amines are highly basic than aromatic amines and also next thing you have to remember secondary amines are more basic than primary and tertiary in the aqueous medium because of the steric strength and plus i group combined effect Okay, plus I group increases, basic nature increases. So here if you see, C2H5 and H2, C2H5 secondary amine, this is tertiary amine, this is aliphatic amine. So aliphatic amine should be the least of all of them. So where it is, answer should be two here. So C2H5 and H2, then primary, then tertiary, then secondary. This is the answer. So answer is two here. So for, uh, for ethyl, this order will become opposite. Tertiary comes before primary. Okay, for methyl, this is the order, right? So, answer is true here. Okay, let's see the next question, question number 45. Which of the following compounds will give hell wolhard jelens reaction? What is hell wolhard jelens reaction, HPZ reaction? It's basically compound having a alpha hydrogen, carboxylic acid having alpha hydrogen. This is alpha carbon. So, that reacts with red phosphorus and X2 that gives you corresponding alpha halogenated carboxylic acid okay so here as you can see where is uh, alpha hydrogen and carboxylic acid you have to check the answer is one here okay so let's go to the next question question number 46 and is the following acids in the increasing order of the acidic strength so as we discussed acidic strength is basically this is from aldehydes ketones carboxylic acids we discussed this electron withdrawing group increases acidic nature also increases we have discussed in the today's discussion also we have discussed that so here out of all of them no2 have the highest electron withdrawing group so that has the more uh, uh, acidic strength then come fluorine then come fluorine then come hydrogen so answer is this one so this has the more acidic nature so answer is four okay let's go to the next one question number 47 in which of the following what is the increasing order of the uh, the reactivity towards nucleophilic addition reaction. First thing first, I'll tell for the nucleophilic addition reaction, aldehydes are more reactive than ketones. How we can say this is, this can be explained like this. More plus I groups, less reactivity. Or you can say more steric hindrance, then also less reactivity. So keep these things in mind, you can answer them. So first of all, uh, so ketones will be less reactive. So acetophenone will be least reactive. So one and four you can remove easily. So then comes benzaldehyde and paratolaldehyde. So if you see the others, paratolaldehyde is this one. Electron with electron donating group is there. So electron donating group decreases reactivity. Remember that. And uh, para nitro benzaldehyde. So if electron withdrawing group decreases electron uh, reactivity electron do, uh, with if plus i group decreases reactivity so minus i group should increase the reactivity so para nitro benzaldehyde will have highest reactivity of all of them so para nitro benzaldehyde comes then comes para to, uh, then comes benzaldehyde para nitro benzaldehyde then comes benzaldehyde and para toraldehyde will be least so answer should be three here Okay, so this is a kind of a moderate question from the aldehyde ketones chapter. If you know the concept very well, then only you can solve this type of questions. Question number 48. The gutterman coach reaction is used in the industrial preparation of benzaldehyde. The electrophile used in involved in this reaction is. So here we use what is gutterman reaction. So here in presence of C, uh, benzaldehyde in presence of CO and HCl, you're going to get concentrated uh, in presence of anhydrous AlCl3. Right, for CO in presence of concentrated HCl and hydrous AlCl3, you are going to get benzaldehyde. That's the that's the equation. Okay, so here what is the 
uh, electrophile you are going to get is basically you are going to get CHO plus you are going to get. So answer is three here. Okay, so let's go to the next one. It's number 49. Formaldehyde undergo Kenizaro reaction because see Kenizaro reaction means basically HCHO in presence of a base. We are going to get acid, HCOH as well as base, CH3OH. So this is called Kenizaro reaction. So this happens when there is no alpha hydrogen, then only this can happen. So it has alpha hydrogen atom, that is wrong answer. It does not have alpha hydrogen atom, that is correct one. It doesn't it does not undergo self-oxidation and reduction on heating with concentrated alkali. That's wrong answer. It undergoes self-reduction on reduction with concentrated alkali. That's what happening here. So B and D are the correct answers. So answer should be one here. Okay, so let's move to the next one. Question number 50, which is the last one. In the reaction, CH3 thrice uh, C, CO, CH3 plus HI products are. So in the case of this, what happens is CH3 thrice CO, CH3. At first, they will gain the H and you will get the positive charge here. But since the tertiary carbocation is more stable, so you are going to get the tertiary carbocation, most stable carbocation first. Most stable carbocation, you are going to get the get it first. So once this is formed, so basically this reaction goes through SN1. So you will get CH3OH here and uh, CH3 thrice C I will be formed when I minus attacks to this. Okay, so see this basically. In step two, the reaction and the departure of leaving group CH3O creates the less stable carbocation. That's wrong. Departure of leaving group creates more stable carbocation. That's correct. And it follows a stern one reaction mechanism, as I said. So B and C are correct answers. So answer is two here. So this is a kind of a moderate question because this exception, many people don't remember this from alcohol phenols chapter, alcohol phenols ethers. Okay. So I'll say this is an easy question. Okay, guys, thank you. I think that's, uh, that's the discussion. I hope everyone understood the uh, questions. Okay, I'll say overall the question paper is easy to moderate. Okay, most of the questions can be answered easily. Okay, thank you, guys.